Konnichiwa minasan. Hey friends, how are you? Welcome to Saril Japan YouTube channel. This is a place where we talk about Japan, the Japanese language and the Japanese culture. Today is lesson 72 of the series Japanese for Beginners. And the topic for today's lesson is adverbs of sequence last and next in relation to year, month and week. Friends, if you are a subscriber to this channel, that's well and good. But if you have been watching videos of this channel, but haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do so, so that you get notification. In fact, instant notification of any videos that gets uploaded. So the URL is pretty simple. YouTube.com slash at Saral Japani. That is S-A-R-A-L-J-A-P-E-A-N-I. For the videos of all the previous 71 lessons and this lesson 72 as well, do visit the playlists section of this channel and click on this playlist, Japanese lessons for beginners. And in this playlist, you will find all these lessons all together at one place. In that way, it will be very easy for you to navigate through the lessons if you are a, especially if you are an, if you are a new subscriber to this channel and haven't gone through all the previous videos. Having said that, let's now proceed towards today's lesson 72, adverbs of sequence, last and next in relation to year, month and week. So what's the definition of an adverb? The Oxford Dictionary says, a word or phrase that modifies or qualifies an adjective, verb or another adverb or a word group expressing a relation of place, time, circumstance, manner, cause, degree, etc. For example, gently, quiet, then, there, and so on. So if we put it simply, then adverb is something that qualifies a verb. So there are several categories or types of adverbs. There are adverbs of frequency, for example, always, never, often, sometimes, rarely, and so on. Adverbs of degree, degree in the sense, very, extremely, almost, just, to enough. Adverbs of manner include examples like quickly, slowly, carefully, happily, sadly, loudly, quietly. Then there are adverbs of place like here, there, everywhere, somewhere, up, down, away, near, and so on. Adverbs of time, now, then, soon, always, often, never, ever, and so on. Interrogative adverbs include when, where, how, why, which, all these questions, question, mark, question words. Relative adverbs are whence, whether, then whither as well. Conjunctive adverbs, this is the last category of adverbs which contains however, moreover, nevertheless, therefore, furthermore. So, having said all these types of adverbs, now our topic for today is adverbs of sequence, but where does this adverbs of sequence fall in which category of these? So adverbs of sequence is basically a subset of the time adverbs, that is adverbs of time. So these are the adverbs of sequence, after, before, finally, first, firstly, last, lastly, next, second, secondly, then thirdly. Out of these adverbs of sequence, we will discuss about next and last, these two adverbs of sequence in today's lesson. And we will see how these are used in Japanese grammar with relation to year, month, and week. So we have these two for today, last and next. Last year, last month, last week, and next year, next month, next week. So recap of time adverbs discussed so far. So uh, uh, so this means we have discussed time adverbs before also in this series. So what were those? Day before yesterday, ototoi. Yesterday, kino. Today, keo. Tomorrow, ashita. Day after tomorrow, asatte. So we already discussed all these when we discussed about the present and past tense and also the days of the week. So let's look at the kanji. This is the kanji of today. So this is the kanji for day, which is nichi, and this is the kanji of ima, that is now. So now plus day means today. This is the kanji for yesterday, where we see again the common day, and this kanji represents the previous day. And one day more previous, 
that is day before yesterday. Here we have one followed by yesterday. So this gives the meaning of day before yesterday. Tomorrow, Ashta. So this is for the next and this is day, next day, that is tomorrow. And this is again, this additional symbol makes it day after tomorrow. So we have studied these five time adverbs earlier in this series. So today's uh, first one, adverbs of sequences last year. So last year is called Keonen, Keonen, Keonen. And this is the kanji for Keo. And this is the kanji for nen. So this is this must be familiar to you. If not this one, this is the kanji of year. And this kanji represents the previous year or last year. Kyonen. Then we have last month, which is sengetsu. Sengetsu means last year. Uh, sorry, last month. This is the kanji for month, which is getsu or gatsu. And this is the kanji for seng, which is previous. Last week is senshu. So before going there, so you might you might ask why we have different symbols when the word is the same last last year. We have this symbol for last month. We have this symbol for both being last. So we will come to that in the next slide and we will we will look into this difference. And why is this difference? The third one is last week, which is senshu. So senshu again, sen is common for last, and this is the kanji of week. You might have come across this, although we have not yet discussed this kanji in our kanji lessons, which we will do in near future. But for now, just uh, visualize this as next week, uh, sorry, last week, which is senshu. So last year is kyonen, last month is sengetsu, and last week is senshu. Now let's look, take a look at next. Next week, next week is raishu. Rai means next, shu is week as in senshu. So senshu last week, raishu next week. And this is the kanji for next. <clears throat> next month is rai gets. So it's the sen gets replaced with rai. So senshu raishu, sen gets, rai gets. This is next month. And next year is rai nen. So now you can see when it comes to next, it has the same symbol for all three. Raishu, Raigetsu, Rainen. It is easy to remember. But when it comes to last, we have a different kanji for Rai, uh, for Kyonen, which is last year. And we have a different symbol for last month and last week, which are Sengetsu and Senshu. So as I said, we will look into why this difference in case of year, we will look in the next slide. But before that, let's recap one more time or revise one more time. Last year, Kyonen. Last month, Sengetsu. Last week, Senshu. Next week, Raishu. Next month, Raigetsu. And next year, Rainen. Kyonen, Rainen. Sengetsu, Raigetsu. Senshu, Raishu. So let's now look at these two Kyonen and Sengetsu, Senshu. <clears throat> this symbol, which is Kyo, it represents the verb to go in general. It can be used to describe to go to a place, to remove, to get rid of, to be apart from in space or time, or of a time or an event that has just passed or elapsed. So as highlighted in red, this is our point of interest or the phrase of interest, a time or an event that has just passed or elapsed. So when this meaning is attached to a year, then definitely it becomes the gone by year. Hence, when used with this uh, nen, it indicates the year that has just passed or just elapsed. So that means this is the kanji, the composite kanji that represents last year. Now the questions remain as it is that why then this symbol for next month and why this symbol used for next week? Why not to use this symbol for this case as well? Now this kanji, which is sen, it represents first, it may represent first early prior, former, in advance. It is used to express last month and last week. So now our million dollar question, why the kanji for last year is this, while last month, last week uses this symbol instead of this symbol. So the answer is this. This is this kanji. This is a word that means a few years ago. So that means if we use this kanji with year, then that does not give the meaning of last year, but it may mean few years ago or any of the gone by years, not only the previous year. And this is similar to this word, which means a few days ago. So that means <coughs> this kanji symbol, it means 
the gone by period, not necessarily the last period. So now if we use this kanji, it means it can be used to represent he got a job last year or he got a job past year. That means in the previous year. That is, it is the year before this one. Now if we use this combination of symbols, then it represents he got a job in a previous year. It, it is not necessarily the last year, but a previous year. So this is the difference that it brings when we use these two kanji symbols along with the kanji of year. But when it comes to month or week, using this kanji, it gives the meaning of the last year, the last month or the last week only. So this is the reason why this kyo is used with nen to make it kyo nen. And seng is not used with nen, but it is used with sengetsu and senshu for last month and last week. So adverbs of sequence, let's now look at examples and sentences in Japanese. So in the previous lessons, we have discussed about particles ni, o, and a, and we have looked at different verbs like to go, to come, to return, then to eat, to drink, to study, and so on. So we will utilize all those known information along with today's adverbs of sequence, that is keonen, sengetsu, senshu, and rainen, raigetsu, raishu, and we will make some sentences. So the first sentence is, I went to Japan last year. Watashi wa keonen nihon e ikimashita. So the rest of the things we have uh, derived from the previous lesson, you, if you have watched the video of the last lesson, then you already know Watashi wa Nihon e Ikimashita. This we have done last in the last class. That is, I went to Japan. Now, if you add Kyonen, it becomes last year. So Watashi wa Kyonen Nihon e Ikimashita. That means I went to Japan last year. Now, if you don't write Watashi wa, you can simply write Kyonen. If you begin with Kyonen, then after Kyonen, you have to add the particle wa because kyonen then becomes the subject or the topic and it must be followed by the wa particle. So watashi wa kyonen nihon e ikimashita will become kyonen wa nihon e ikimashita if you omit watashi wa. So this is very important. And if you write watashi wa, then there is no need to write wa again after kyonen. That will be incorrect. So watashi wa kyonen nihon e ikimashita or kyonen wa nihon e ikimashita. The next example, I went to China last month. Watashi wa sengetsu chūgoku e ikimashita. Watashi wa sengetsu chūgoku, chūgoku is China, e ikimashita. So, although I have used several kanji symbols, so you should not get much bothered with that. It is just for representational purposes. So, we will do each of these kanji symbols if not done earlier. So, some of these we have already done. Like this one we have done. This one we have done in our previous kanji lessons. This we have done. This we have done and this also we have done. So out of these, most of these are already discussed. But still, if you find it difficulty, then you can learn this slowly. Our intention in this lesson is to discuss about the adverbs of sequence and combining them with the particle and the verb. So don't get much overwhelmed with the kanji symbols. Just look at these examples. I went to China last month. Watashi wa sengetsu chū goku e ikimashita. I went to South Korea last month, last week. So now last week is Senshu. So Watashi wa Senshu, Kankoku e ikimashita. This is Kankoku, which means South Korea. Kankoku. Watashi wa Senshu, Kankoku e ikimashita. So all these follow the same rule, and these are very simple sentences to follow. I went to Yokohama day before yesterday. So this is a separate one. Watashi wa Ototoi, Yokohama e ikimashita. So the structure of each of these examples is the same. So very, very easy to follow and you can practice in this way. You can just replace the name of the place and then you can use last year, last month, last week, day before yesterday, yesterday and so on. And you can make your own sentences. So in this way, you uh, you can practice and you can master on this. Watashi wa kyonen nihon e ikimashita. Watashi wa sengetsu chū goku e ikimashita. Watashi wa senshu kankoku e ikimashita. Watashi wa ototoi. Yokohama e ikimashita. Now, it, that was past tense. Now, let's see future tense and present tense. I will go to Germany next year. Watashi wa rainen. Rainen is next year. Watashi wa rainen. Deutz. Deutz is Germany, which comes from Deutsche. 
So it's doitsu e ikimasu. Now, ikimashita becomes ikimasu in the future tense. I will go to Germany next year. Watashi wa rainen doitsu e ikimasu. And if you don't use watashi wa, then you can use rainen wa doitsu e ikimasu. Rainen wa doitsu e ikimasu. Or watashi wa rainen doitsu e ikimasu. I am going to Hiroshima last next month. Next month. So sorry about that. So it should be next month. I am going to Hiroshima next month. Watashi wa raigetsu Hiroshima e ikimasu. Watashi wa raigetsu Hiroshima e ikimasu. I will go to the club next week. Watashi wa raishu kurabu e ikimasu. Watashi wa raishu, that is next week, kurabu. Kurabu. So this is katakana because this is, a, this is an English word. So it's written in katakana, which is kurabu. Kurabu, and when we pronounce it, it's kurabu. Watashi wa raishu kurabu e ikimasu. I am going to school day after tomorrow. Watashi wa asatte gakko e ikimasu. Or asatte wa gakko e ikimasu. This is very easy. So in this way, for the present and future tense, we use this kind of grammar. So few more examples. I came to Japan last year. Now going becomes Came. So this is another verb which is kimas. So let's see. I came to Japan last year is watashi wa kyonen nihon e kimashita. So ikimashita now becomes kimashita because now I am in Japan and I am talking about coming of my into Japan. So watashi wa kyonen nihon e kimashita. Mr. Tanaka came to India last month. Tanaka san wa sengetsu indo e kimashita. So when we use, as we discussed, kimas we use when the speaker, that is I am the speaker now, so I am in India and I am talking about someone else's coming to India or myself having come from some other place to India. So kimashita is used to represent to come and ikimas, ikimas is used to represent to go somewhere. And this is to come from somewhere or to come to somewhere. So Mr. Tanaka came to India last month. Tanaka Sanwa Sengetsu Indoe Kimashita. Mr. Honda came to my house last week. Honda Sanga Senshu Watashi no Uchie Kimashita. Very, very important example. Honda Sanga. So now instead of wa, we are using ga. So we had discussed this when we discussed the ga particle. So this is to put more emphasis and to give further respect to Mr. Honda, we have replaced wa with ga. Although wa is also technically correct, grammatically correct, there is no issue if we, even if we use wa, but ga has been used for a change to show more respect to Mr. Honda and to give him more importance in this sentence. Honda-san ga senshu watashi no uchi. Watashi no uchi means my house. Watashi no uchi, uchi means house. Watashi no is my house. Watashi no uchi e kimashita. Mr. Honda came to my house last week. I came from Mumbai yesterday. Watashi wa kino Mumbai kara kimashita. So it is now came from. In the previous examples, it was came to, came to, came to. But now it is came from. So we have to use the particle kara, which means from. I came from Mumbai yesterday. Watashi wa kino, kino is yesterday. Mumbai, this is again katakana because Mumbai is a foreign word, not a Japanese word. Kara kimashita. Watashi wa kino Mumbai kara kimashita. I came from Mumbai yesterday. Mr. Das will come to Japan next year. Das san wa rainen nihon e kimas. Mr. Das will come to Japan next year. So Das san, Das is a foreign surname, so that's why katakana. Das san wa rainen nihon e kimas. Mr. Suzuki will return to London next month. So now after ikimas and kimas, let's see modorimas because return is modorimas. And why this will not be kairimas? Because it is assumed that since Mr. Suzuki is a Japanese person, so a place in Japan should be his home. And had it been the case, then we could have written kairimas. But modorimas because he is returning to London. Probably Mr. Suzuki stays in London. He came to some place and he is returning back to London. That's why modorimas is the verb which is used and not kairimas. 
Mr. Suzuki will return to London next month. Suzuki san wa raigetsu rondon e modorimasu. Raigetsu is next month. Rondon, this is the, this is the uh, katakana word for London, which is rondon e modorimasu. Suzuki san wa raigetsu rondon e modorimasu. Mr. Suzuki will return to London next month. I hope the difference between modorimasu and kairimasu is clear, which we had discussed in detail in one of the previous lessons. The next is I will return back to India next week. Now the person is an Indian who is who has traveled probably to Japan and now he is returning back home, his native place in India, and that's why we are now using kairimasu instead of modorimasu. So watashi wa Raishu. Now this is next week. So Raishu Indo e Kairimas. Watashi wa Raishu Indo e Kairimas. I will return back to India next week. Mr. Tanaka is going back to Japan tomorrow. Now this becomes Kairimas. Tanaka san wa Ashita Nihon e Kairimas. So earlier it was Modorimas for London, but now since it is he's returning back to his home in Japan, so it is Kairimas. Mr. Tanaka is going back to Japan tomorrow. Tanaka san wa Ashita Nihon e Kairimas. Now let's add some more information. So now there is last year, but we have added the name of the month as well. I went to Japan in March last year. Watashi wa kyonen no sangatsu ni nihon e ikimashita. So very, very important. And we had discussed each of these components in our previous lessons. If you have not watched those lessons, especially from 67 onwards, do watch those videos because those are the very, very basic prerequisites. So watashi wa kyonen. Kyonen is last year. No is the particle to show the possess possessiveness or the belonging. Kyonen no Sangatsu. Sangatsu is the third month. This is three, this is month, this is the third month. This represents the month of March. So Kyonen no Sangatsu means the third month of last year, which is March. So March last year is nothing but Sangatsu no, sorry, Kyonen no Sangatsu, that is Sangatsu of Kyonen, which means the third month of last year and which is March. So March last year. Kyonen no Sangatsu means March of last year. Now an additional particle ni is getting added. We had discussed before to repeat that same thing. Ni here is uh, basically used as a time marker. When there is a specific time mentioned uh, in the sentence, then it has to be followed by the ni particle. Had it been only Kyonen, so Kyonen doesn't represent any specific time or day or month of the year of the previous year. So there is no need for knee. But now since it has been specifically mentioned March, so it has to be followed by knee particle. That's why the whole thing becomes Watashi wa kyonen no sangatsu ni nihon e ikimashita. So very interesting example and very, very easy to understand as well and very, very important as well. I went to Japan in March last year. Watashi wa kyonen no sangatsu ni nihon e ikimashita. Let's take one more example. Mr. Suzuki returned to China on the 8th of last month. Now, again, Mr. Suzuki is a Japanese and he's returning to China. Probably it's uh, in China where he's working. So that's why we will use Modorimas. So Mr. Suzuki returned to China on the 8th of last month. This becomes Suzuki Sanwa Sengatsu no Yoka ni Chugoku e Modorimashita. So look at this phrase Sengetsu no Yoka. Yoka is the eighth day. Eighth day of the month is known as Yoka. Eight is Hachi and this is Nichi. Hachi Nichi, which, which is called Yoka as a standard word for the eighth day. So Sengetsu no Yoka means Yoka of Sengetsu, that is eighth day of last month. Eighth day of last month, Sengetsu no Yoka. And it will be followed by the Ni particle as explained before because it is a specific day. So Suzuki Sanwa Sengetsu no Yoka ni Chugoku e Modorimashita. Mr. Suzuki returned to China on the 8th of last month. So it should be very, very clear to you why we have written this Sengetsu no Yoka ni Chugoku e Modorimashita. Mr. Tanaka went to Yoka. Yokohama last Friday. Mr. Tanaka went to Yokohama last Friday. Tanaka san wa senshu no kin yobi ni Yokohama e ikimashita. So again, this similar kind of phrase, senshu no kin yobi. Kin yobi is Friday. So here 
you can see in English, we can directly write last Friday. We don't have to write Friday of last week, but in Japanese, there is no way we can write last Friday. We have to write Senshu no Kinyobi. That means Friday of last week. Friday of last week. Mr. Tanaka went to Yokohama Friday of last week. Tanaka san wa Senshu no, Senshu no Kinyobi ni Yokohama e ikimashita. So this is Senshu for last week. And this is Kinyobi, which is Friday. So Friday of last week. Tanaka san wa Senshu no Kinyobi ni Yokohama e ikimashita. Mr. Tanaka went to Yokohama last Friday. Now, those were all motion verbs. Ikimas, kimas, modorimas, kairimas. Now, let's look at few other verbs. For example, to eat, which is tabemas. I ate sushi last Sunday. How do we say that in Japanese? Senshu no nichiyobi ni sushi o tabemashita. You can use watashiwa as well in the beginning, which is not necessary. So, it is implied that the person who is talking, he is talking about himself, unless he is referring to some other name. Watashi wa senshu no nichiyobi. Senshu no nichiyobi means Sunday, Sunday of last week. Nichiyobi is Sunday, senshu is last week. So, nichi, senshu no nichiyobi means Sunday of last week, that is last Sunday. So, I ate sushi last Sunday. Senshu no nichiyobi ni sushi o tabemashita. I will study Japanese from the first of next month. Raigetsu no tsuitachi kara nihongo o benkyo shimas. So now another difference you might have noticed here. In place of a, we are writing o. This also we have discussed. We use a with motion verbs and with other verbs we use o particle. Senshu no nichiyobi ni sushi o tabemashita. Raigetsu no tsuitachi kara nihongo o benkyo shimas. That means watashi wa raigetsu no tsuitachi. Raigetsu no tsuitachi means tsuitachi means uh, first day of the month and Raigetsu is next month. So the first day of next month, I will start studying Japanese. Watashi wa Raigetsu no Tsuita Chikara. Kara, again, because we are using from, so the kara particle must be written here because it represents from. Raigetsu no Tsuita Chikara. Nihongo o Benkyo Shimas. Nihongo is Japanese language. O is the particle of the verb. Yeah, that that precedes uh, precedes the verb and benkyo shimas is to study. This is the verb. Raigetsu no tsuitachi kara nihongo o benkyo shimas. I will study Japanese from the first of next month. And finally, a very very important and uh, pretty long sentence. I am going to India next Monday and will be back on the sixth of next month. Now we have combined two sentences in a single sentence. So if you can translate this on your own, then I would say you have pretty much command over this concept of verbs, particles, and these adverbs of sequence. I am going to India next Monday and will be back on the 6th of next month. So I'm giving you some time. Just think about it and uh, try to translate this into Japanese using the concepts that we have discussed in today's lesson. And uh, I will pause for a moment and then I will show you the correct answer. I am going to India next Monday and will be back on the 6th of next month. So here is the translation. The first, let's look at this part by part. First is I am going to India next Monday. Let's look until here. Watashi wa Raishu no Getsuyobi ni Indo e ikimasu. Raishu no Getsuyobi. Getsuyobi is Monday. This is the kanji for Getsuyobi. And Raishu is next week. So Monday of next week. Raishu no Getsuyobi. Watashi wa Raishu no Getsuyobi ni Indo e ikimas. I, I am going to India next Monday or I will go to India next Monday. Then comes and, which is soshite. Soshite means and. Will be back on the 6th of next month. And will be back means modorimas. The verb is modorimas. So, raigetsu no muika. Muika is the sixth day of the month. That is, roku nichi is called muika. So, muika of next month. That is, raigetsu no muika. Muika of raigetsu. That is, raigetsu no muika. Soshite and 
Raigetsu no Muika ni modorimasu. We'll be back on this 6th of next month. So now if we combine this, I am going to India next Monday and we'll be back on the 6th of next month. This translates to Watashi wa Raishu no Getsu yobi ni Indo e ikimasu. Soshite Raigetsu no Muika ni modorimasu. So with this, we come to an end of today's lesson. We have completed 72 lessons so far. I hope this lesson has been helpful and useful for the beginners. And do send in your feedback, comments, and suggestions as comments to this video. And we will see and we will meet again very soon in the next lesson of this channel, Sarel Japani. And if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe and share videos of this channel on your social media handles so that more people come to know about this channel. Thank you so much. See you again. Arigato gozaimasu. Mata imashou.